Yes, we finally did it. We finally took down a tournament in the Stellar Crown format with Maridon EX. This is the new mat I've added to my collection of, uh, of cup winning mats. Today's video is gonna be super chill. I'm not gonna like highly edit it or anything like that. I wasn't even vlogging at these tournaments for that matter. I was just locked in. We're gonna cover three events. The first one is a league challenge that happened at Manta Trading last Friday. Then we also had a uh, league cup that happened at Perfect Sphere Games on the Saturday. And then this most recent Friday, we uh, went to Manta Trading for their $5 weekly tournament as well. That said, I also just uploaded a 52 minute video, a full deck profile covering the deck that I used to win uh, the League Cup with. It's a really good base list for Maridon with some spice, with some, some spice in there. I'll have to admit that much. It's not your regular Maridon list. The common question of the day is because I'm going to start uploading gameplay videos on this channel. How long do you want these gameplays to be? I asked on Twitter and Instagram and a lot of you guys said three hour gameplays. Some of you guys just said yes in general. Do you want one hour, two hour, three hour gameplays? All the games are going to be at Arceus rank, the highest rank you can play at in the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. Tournament number one, this took place on, I believe, September 27th. Here is the exact 60 card list that we played for this first Pokemon uh, League Challenge tournament. This is my personal build of Maridon. I've been really enjoying Regilecki VMAX in my Maridon list uh, over the last couple of months over the summer. Um, and pairing that with Pokemon like Luxray V was really, really annoying. Now we have the power of Raikou V with Area Zero Under Depth for some bigger, bigger attacks. But anyways, round number one, uh, we played against a player, Josh, fellow Filipino as well. I love playing my fellow Filipinos. There's so many Filipino players in the, the, the Toronto area. It's, it's really cool to see. I'm half if you guys didn't know. Round one, we played against Josh and Josh is known as a like a Turbo Lost Zone player. He was playing Dragapult EX and Dragapult EX is a a scarier matchup for Maridon EX. It's uh, it's basically like a 50-50 and it really just depends on who can draw better or who has better uh, who has better text and stuff for the particular uh, for that particular matchup. So it's typically a 50-50. Dragapult's usually really good at taking those big four prize turns. Maridon's just really good at being fast and being vicious and attacking what it wants, like a Dreepy or a Pidgey or a, a two prize Pokemon on the bench. This was a really close matchup against Josh on Dragapult EX. I ended up having uh, basically, I had basically game in hand. I had so many ways to win game in hand on my second last turn. However, um, Josh hit me with the fattest Iono possible. His Iono threw away like my boss's orders and all my good stuff to the bottom of the deck. And so when I drew my opening, my new hand off the Iono, which was like Iono to two, it was, it was crap. <laughs> I just grew, I just drew really crappy cards. I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm cooked now. I, I can't win anymore off that Iono that he hit me with. So he was able to set up a big four prize turn board wipe and uh, he cooked me. He, he cooked me with the Iono and then he cooked me with the Dragapult. I did have some fun in the matchup though, figuring out different lanes that I could take with uh, battling Dragapult EX. The really good thing that Maridon can do against Dragapult EX is you can easily take two prizes. The ideal prize route is you go Iron Hands and then take uh, two prizer, two prizer, or go Iron Hands, Iron Hands again, and then a two prizer like a Rotom or a Luminion, or in some cases a Pidgeot EX. However, um, I wasn't able to get the Iron Hands play off. I believe I prized Iron Hands, and I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to, to amp. So instead of making a weird, awkward prize trade, I, I think I decided to just like. I either squawk attacked or I just attached for turn and didn't attack because you have to also be careful with their deck uh, if they are playing like the Dust Noirs and stuff like that and then you can put them in a really good scenario. Some other things I probably could have done in the matchup was like set up my Radiant Greninja earlier for some more extra jaw uh, outside of my Mew Restart and Fleet Footed uh, because when you do get hit with that, those Ionos you really want to be able to use like Fresendipity, Mew, and Greninja to draw out of your low hand size. So we start off this tournament with a 0-1 record losing to Josh on Dragapult EX. One last thing I left out about the Dragapult EX matchup is Josh probably knows I'm playing Maridon. Like most people know I'm playing Maridon. So a lot of players will like, even if they'll win the coin toss and it's sometimes more optimal for them to go first, they'll just go second to take away my strong powers of going second and being able to like go for big knockouts or just donk them. Um, so I basically, in this entire tournament, I believe I lost five coin tosses. I lost five coin flips in a row until the very last round. Raging Bolt, we ended up going first and we had a really, really awkward start. I actually took a photo of 
uh, the opening <laughs> the opening hand. It was really, really hard to see. We ended up with a dream hand if you win the coin toss and go second. Uh, but because Raging Vault, of course, also always wants to go second, they're going to happily take it away from a Maridon player. We have the Squawk Start. We have the Rescue Board, two Lightning Energies, two Electric Generators, a Switch Cart, and Arvin. This is the like dream turn one start going second only thing that could make this better is probably like having a nest ball in there uh, but in this case i would just arvin for the nest ball since we already have the generators in hand it was a beautiful hand to see when reality sets in and you know you're going first and you're gonna have to squawk away every single card that felt horrible for this particular tournament i had te i was testing two squawk abilities so i actually drew <laughs> i drew into my other squawk ability for turn Bruh. So bad, so bad. I was like, wow, I'm getting punished for testing two Squawk Abilities. And that's the reason why you don't play two Squawk Abilities. Um, but it's just rare that you have such a cracked out hand, you have to, to squawk and seize away or squawk and squeeze away. Somehow, my opponent ended up having a bricky game as well. Uh, they started Teal Mask Ogre Pond and they weren't able to set up a Raging Ball till the second turn. So even though I had a really bad start and had to squawk and squeeze my beautiful hand away, they were just hard bricking as the Raging Bull player. They weren't able to get the turn one attack off, so I was like, whew, I'm so thankful that happened. I ended up drawing into like a Rai Cooper turn, and then I ended up, I think, just like even motivating, or or maybe I uh, attached and retreated into my Rai Cube. But basically, the, the, the big thing I can remember from this matchup was how badly my opponent was bricking, and how painful my start was. And although I had that painful start, I was still, still able to clutch it up in the end um, with the help of Regilecki VMAX because my Regilecki VMAX was what allowed my Maridon EX to swing for 250 into the 240 HP Raging Bolts. My Dragon Bolt EX opponent for round number three, uh, they chose to go second and uh, this time we were actually able to set up a pretty good board state turn one with the help of Maridon, Squawkabilly, and the Regilecki Vs. The really nice thing that my deck has is turn one pressure going first because your average Maridon deck doesn't have any way to really benefit from, you know, setting up Pokemon with tandem unit to evolve because they're not playing evolution Pokemon. But because we went first, we were able to set up that turn one Regilecki V so we can turn it into a VMAX on the following or later turns in the game. And that damage boost is really, really useful. And also being able to use my attacks from Regilecki V or my Zero Aura attacking into their uh, 50 HP Pidgeys was really handy as well. So they weren't able to evolve into Pidgeot at all. And uh, eventually they were just living on the Dreepies and my Iron Hands EX was able to just amp those Dreepies and um, thinned out my deck so much that my generators were, were definitely cooking that matchup. Round number four is where things get dicey. They get really, really close. We were playing against this, uh, this ancient box not ancient box, it's like your ancient EX box player that features Pokemon like Gouging Fire EX along with Roaring Moon EX. So a very spicy kind of homebrew list. And uh, there was a point in the game where it was it was looking real bad if I wasn't able to uh, to to hit my my last generator for that extra energy for uh, for my last attack of the game. But basically, I needed to hit 290 HP, which is a tall task, especially for, you know, any any basic Pokemon. But because of the way my opponent played, they had to go full wide with their bench. And so they went five wide, and uh, I basically went full eight wide, and I had my Zapdos on the board as well. The math checks out to hit that 290 perfectly. You got eight on my bench, five on yours, plus the, uh, the 20 for the Raikou V plus the 10 for my Zapdos. So I was able to swing for that juicy 290 and one shot. I actually, I think I prime captured it. A, uh, I one shotted the the full health, fully charged up uh, Roaring Moon EX with the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule on it, I believe. So very, very happy uh, to manage to pull off that attack. One point of the game, I accidentally drew for turn, or not drew for turn, I fleet footed with their Fluttermane in the active. So I saw the top card in my deck because we were super chill, my opponent was chill, it was cool, so we just like let it go. And then later, like the very next turn, they play Iono, or I play Iono, and they basically just started putting their hand and shuffled their hand into their deck. 
and it was it was uh, it was it was bad. So we, we had like an eye for an eye. Our misplays just canceled out each other, and uh, yeah, we ended up winning it in the end against this ancient box ex player. Very fun game. So now going into round number five, we are three wins and one loss, and our round five opponent we played against the homie Matan, and uh, he won the coin toss, and he chose to go second because he also wanted to deny me. He wa everybody wants to deny me that turn two big swing. Um, I was like at this point I should just expect to go first, so I should just put Magnus on V Star and B in my deck. So I went first. I had a really strong opening start, like my Maridon deck will typically do, because it's built for really strong consistency. So set up really well. My opponent Matan didn't really set up too well, and we just did Ampy very much three turns in a row, and that was that. On to round six, we played against a young player, Parker, who's been really, really enjoying ruining people's days at Pokemon card tournaments with variety of control decks. So Parker's been playing like uh like Pidgeot EX control and like this Mimikyu control style deck along with having like the Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond in there too. So he's playing some diabolical evil control decks. I finally won my very first coin toss of the day. And of course it's against the control player Parker and he opens up Mimikyu and stuff and I was not able to turn one donk him unfortunately. I ended up making a couple, uh, you could say major misplays because there's really no small misplays when you're playing against control. Every single misplay you make against the control player player is like boosted up times five like it is extra punishing when you mess up against a control player because your your resources are so so critical and so I was very very scared I was playing very scared like he was gonna drop in a Snorlax and there was no Snorlaxes in the deck he, he had no Snorlaxes in there I believe um, so I was playing scared at the start and I could have made some aggressive plays that just didn't that just didn't happen because I was playing scared. And the misplay just added up over time. And very by the very end of it, I think Parker had like a 30 card hand. And he hit Tails on Silene. Like, Tails, Tails, and then another Silene. Tails, Tails. And then he pal pads the Silenes or whatever back and finally hits Heads, Heads. And eventually, we were just draw passing all game until he would eventually deck me out because... He would just deck me out. I'd run out of cards and he would be able to do the Silene pop pad loop to never run out of cards in his deck eventually. So our final record for this very first tournament of this tournament recap is uh, is four wins and two losses. We got sixth place out of 34 players. Now on top of that, I was not the only Maridon player in the top eight. We actually had two other Maridon players in the top eight. The homie Vincent ended up getting second place with his list. And uh, we also had Chantel getting fifth who was using the exact same 60 that Vincent gave her the deck list for. It feels good, you know, happy to see three Ramai three th th three Ramaidons, three Maridons in top eight. You ready for the next tournament? Hmm? You ready for the next the next event? Shake if you're ready. Oh, oh you re you ready? You ready, ready? Oh yeah, you are. So tournament number two was at Perfect Sphere Games. It's just like a really small hole in the wall shop. It was so small that it was just like eight people only. Best of three for each of the rounds, and we had to play three rounds in total. Really well run event. The staff there is very friendly, and uh, just the, the community there was also very friendly and inviting. And we actually saw uh, Chantel there as well, fellow Maridon player. But I don't think we ended up playing her at all. So let's get to the round uh, or second tournament matches. Here is the exact 60 card list we used for this particular tournament if you guys want to uh, see what we played. And this is again the 60 card deck I did uh, full deck profile on on my channel. So round one we played against, uh, I forget his name, shoot, but um, we played against a player who will typically play Charizard. I've seen this player play Charizard so so much so seeing him I was like oh gosh I feel like he could be possibly my like number one opponent, my, my rival for this tournament. So I'm like, I hope I don't hit him round one and I hope he's not playing Charizard. Sure enough, I hit him round one, but he was not playing Charizard. So he was playing Raging Bolt EX. For game one, we won the coin toss. We chose second. They started uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond and they really didn't get to do anything at all. And on my opening turn, I set up real nice and uh, I was hitting my generators and basically I had full board, full bench, did squawk, did my full, sh my full typical turn one. And by the end of it, I was able to use my Maridon's Photon Blaster for the 1-8 KO on his single Teal Mask Ogre Pod. Going into game number two, and also uh, for this particular tournament, I mentioned, remember how I mentioned I was playing two Squawk Ability in the previous tournament? Well, this tournament, I took out one of the Squawk Abilities and I put in the Iron Thorn ZX. So Iron Thorn ZX is the Pokemon I actually started with turn one in my hand and um, I was like okay I guess we're just gonna go for the thorns angle and so uh, we did our whole Maridon play set everything up and then I made sure I dropped my iron thorns in at the very last bench spot 
I used Switch Cart, brought in my Thorns, left him in the active, and said, good luck, have fun with no abilities. And then I think he was able to, uh, on his second turn, he was able to Iron Bundle, but the first turn he wasn't able to Iron Bundle. Um, but yeah, basically, I got fully set up, my Regilecki V's turned into the VMAXs, and we cooked, okay? We, we just cooked. He never attacked a single time, and we finished the 2 out of 3 set in 25 minutes, so we had 25 more minutes to spare. On to round number 2, we played against a deck that I was not expecting to see at all. We played against Great Tusk Mill. Yes, Great Tusk Mill. Uh, this was also quite an interesting game. Game number 1, it was really, really quick. It lasted like 5 minutes. I whiffed the turn 1 donk on him um, by one energy. However, on my second turn of attacking, I was able to get the, the KO with my Zapdos onto the Mimikyu. And then onto game number two against the Great Tusk Mill player. I really messed up and I started Iron Thorns for like no reason. I I just basically stalled myself out a couple turns because I was like, let me slow him down just in case they go with like the Rotom V angle. And I ended up, uh, I ended up taking all my prizes, but my poor opponent was only able to mill extra cards one time. He got to play the Sada for like one turn and that was it. And every time he used his Great Tusk Mill to attack, he would just mill one single card. He just ran away with it. And we also had about 25 minutes left after. So I got to scope out the competition, which is something you really should do. If you finish your matches a little earlier compared to the other players, take some time to watch the other games, especially near the ending portions of the tournament so you can see what your opponents are playing. So you can have a better judgment call if you're gonna go first or second into them, if you do win the coin toss, and you're gonna also be able to scope out particular tech cards they have in their deck, which might become uh, important in your own matchups against them. So game number three, we played against a subscriber playing Dragapult EX. Uh, this is subscriber is also a player in the past who's played a whole bunch of Charizard so I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna hit Charizard in the finals and it's gonna probably be a really really close matchup because this is a subscriber who's actually really really good um, so he flipped over the Dragapult cards which I was expecting because I was able to scout out the previous game um, that he was playing for game one I really did not let him get to play at all uh, I just did Ampy very much three turns in a row and I just kept getting boss off my prize cards or or uh, drawing into boss off my deck. So I just did amp, 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 or I did like an amp, amp, but then took a two prize or like a Bezendipity or a Rotom or something like that. But um, really quick, uh, evil, quick game, game one for match number three in the finals. For game number two, they were having a, uh, a rough game as well in terms of setting up. They chose to go first. I went second, but they were only able to get like one Dreepy out at a time. So each time a Dreepy came out, I would bring in my Raikou and either boss and gust it up and KO it or uh, use Prime Catcher to KO it. Uh, but I basically almost threw at one point of the game because I kind of like bench locked myself or I, I, I like stalled myself out. I really didn't need to have my Mewtwo EX on the board. Uh, for the big bench bonus damage. It's not really a play I need to go for in the Dragapult matchup, especially earlier on. So my opponent was able to stall a couple of turns, actually, I believe two full turns, by just using Counter Catcher on my Mewtwo, and it was just dead drawing out of, like, I couldn't draw a way to, to switch out of my Mewtwo. Eventually, I, I drew into, I think, my only copy of DTE, and then I could just attach it, retreat my Mewtwo back, and then keep swinging. And, uh, yeah, after, after I think the fourth or fifth prize had taken, he has still not really done too much uh, too much to advance advance the board state. He just scooped it up and was like, GG's, that was it. So uh, so yeah, we won it. We won the first League Cup of the season. Ready for some more Pokemon action, huh? You ready? Here. Here you go. Here you go. She loves, whoa, she loves tug of war very very much and now on to the last tournament to report on for this tournament report vlog we have the most recent friday five dollar weekly local tournament at manta that just took place this was a 39 player tournament with six rounds in total and for this particular tournament i decided i wanted to test around some of the different counts of cards in my deck i decided to go down to 14 lightning and two double turbo energy and i also decided to include the Iron Thorns EX back into my list, or keep it in, you could say, but 
I put in a future booster energy capsule as well. Uh, that way I could have, you know, Arvin usually will grab you like a switching card of some sort. Uh, some of the times like a switch card or a rescue board, there's a lot of times your opponent will want to stall you out and gust a iron hands or an iron thorns into the active. So by having cards like Arvin that can, uh, that can search for your future booster energy capsule, you're able to quickly move that thick, that thick, thick, thick lightning Pokemon out of the active and onto your bench. So round number one, we played against uh, Matan, who was the Dragon Ball EX player, I believe from round five that we played against the previous uh, week. Also, it was Matan's birthday and Matan also brought everybody like birthday cake. So happy belated birthday to Matan as well. Uh, but yeah, we played against Matan for this tournament. He was on Terrapagos EX. This version of Terrapagos was very unique. It was very, it was a defensive build. So it had, he really focused on getting those Buffalons set up as quick as he could. This matchup, we had a very rough start. So uh, I lost the coin toss. He chose to go, uh, he chose to go first. He chose to go first. I had a bricky bricky start. It was bad. I think I had like Iron Hands in the active, which is like the, wor the worst case scenario. And uh, I didn't have a supporter at all. I don't think I played a supporter until like the very end of the game. Um, but long story short, for this first matchup against Natan on Trapago CX, I prized double Raikou. Raikou is my main attacker in this deck. I have Heavy Ball too, but I prized a Heavy Ball. I prized Heavy Ball and double Raikou. I had no way to attack with my main attacker. I would have to rely on my Maridons or my Regilikes. And um, I just I wasn't able to, to start the aggressive, aggressive plays I would typically do against this kind of deck. So, Matan beat me. He cooked me. He got his revenge on me from the previous week. So, GG's Matan. Round number two, we have the Maridon EX Mirror Match. This was a really, really fun match. I love doing the Maridon, uh, Maridon EX Mirror Match. I take a lot of pleasure in it because it's like, who's the real master of Maridon in this scenario? And uh, because we have our Regilecki VMAX in our deck, I believe we are favored in the Maridon Mirror Match 60-40, which is crazy to say, you know, being favored in a mirror match. However, when you're t when you're like special cards, your special sauce in your deck just help you in the mirror match. It's technically kind of like teching for the mirror match. So we played against Chantel for this matchup and Chantel was using Vincent's list. Vincent is another Maridon maniac who is a top player, I'd say, in the local scene, one of our better, one of our, one of our better players who also likes to play Maridon a whole bunch. The huge thing in the Maridon mirror match is of course the coin toss and this coin toss, I also lost. Our losing streak of coin tosses do continue or does continue for the Maridon Mirror. I was forced to go first, but I was like, hey, you know what? No big deal. I'll do my thing, which I did. We set up the Regilecki V so I could evolve into my VMAX later on. And uh, yeah, Regilecki VMAX was the big MVP in this matchup. Uh, we, we were trading knockouts back and forth. However, because I had a Regilecki VMAX, my opponent was specifically not like going big on their bench. Instead, they were hitting their generators and hitting them consistently and attaching them to the Maridon. So the Maridons were basically like some of the big main attackers, unless the Bravery Charm went on the Raikou and then the Raikou started to attack. So I was able to swing for uh, 260 into the Raikou V with the help of Maridon and Regilecki VMAX. And by the very end of the game, I had them in a checkmate position where they needed a two card combo, but they could only get one card by the end of it because they had the seal stone very very early on their last turn of the game i knew i had it no matter what uh because they had to go for this like boss stall play and in my hand i had three copies of boss switch cart seal stone and some other stuff and i even drew into, drew for turn into my prime catcher uh, but basically i attacked them with my reggie like v max for 310 or not 310 for 200 damage uh, or 220 and i just knocked out one of their pokemon and there was nothing in their deck because a lot of Maridon players cut their Raichu. They can't have anything in the deck that will one shot a 310 HP Regilecki VMAX. So I had to go for this defensive aggressive play, you could say, by attacking with my heaviest HP attacker, the Regilecki VMAX. And uh, yeah, I, I basically won because of Regilecki VMAX. I went first and I won the mirror. That usually should never happen, uh, but because we have the sauce, we have the sauce. Round number four, we played against uh, we played against the homie Sean. He's our resident dark type enjoyer. He really loves Roaring Moon, Darkrai. He's dabbled with Dialga. Uh, and uh, we've we've done a couple of regional events with Sean as well. For this particular event, Sean was playing this like Roaring Moon, Darkrai V-Star with Dusk Noir package deck. I think it was only one, uh, one copy of Roaring Moon EX. However, um, his deck was all about being turbo and fast and hitting those Pokestops and not caring what you hit. Cause you're gonna have those Night Stretchers. You got Darkrai V-Star. 
Um, so you're able to rescue those Pokemon back from the discard pile and then use your Darkrai V-Star's ability to take two items from your discard, like Rare Candies or Prime Catcher, for example, or Dark Patch. It's a really, really cool turbo deck. I want to give it a try at some point, um, but unfortunately, um, I believe I lost the coin toss and then Sean chose second and I just, I think I just donked him. I, I think I donked him on the following turn. Um, he didn't get anything set up. And we played another one and uh, he beat me in the ones that we did for fun. And, uh, but yeah, I, I took the one that mattered, which is which is what matters the most, you know? Round number four, we played against the living legend, Little Dark Fury. LDF was playing a Golden Go EX. Golden Go EX is a pretty scary deck for Maridon. It was it was very, very scary if you don't have Regilek EV Max to help you out. Having the Regilek EV Max in our deck helps us in the matchup so much. It allows our Maridon to swing for 260, which is Golden Go EX's health for perfect math. And uh, they don't have to go wide on their board necessarily, so they can just get around the Raikou V plays that I was going to try and make. So I kind of had to go more all in on our Maridon EX plus Regilek EV Max combo. And we had a really strong back and forth. The very first attack that he did to me was he chose, uh, he won the coin toss and chose second. So his first attack wasn't an Evo TM, which I was happy about. However, he attacked with his Gimme Ghoul and then it's an attack that does 20 damage for each heads you flip and then you just stop when you hit tails. He hit eight heads in a row. I've never seen anybody hit eight heads in a row like that. That was just, it was it was breathtaking. And I'm always having a fun time playing and goofing around with LDF. So I'm, I'm really playing up my, my reactions because I was genuinely like shocked. It was like one, two, three, four, five, it kept going up. People, people turning their heads and laughing. And basically if you overheard the conversation, you would hear me say, you hit me for eight heads in a row for this amount of damage. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> eight heads in a row? And uh, yeah, he just used like a regular Pokemon ETB dice, but that's just how it goes sometimes. You know, you get crazy, crazy lucky sometimes. Um, and so that allowed him to hit my Iron Thorns uh, for some really, really big numbers. I decided to leave Iron Thorns in the active to try and stop him from doing a uh, kind of like Aluminium play or setting up like the Greninja for some for some concealed card shenanigans. Now our entire match was super close back and forth. It was super fun. However, by the very end of it, getting into like the overtime area, we ran into a judge call, which is painful. A painful judge call that had to be made. LDF, he played Iono and right after he played Iono, he played Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking and picked up his deck and like looked at it for a brief second and so you can see, you know, where all the cards are. And I was like, oh crap, man. I'm gonna have to be that guy who does a judge call on a $5 weekly Pokemon card night. And our game is so close. So there's like no room for error at all. Like it could go either way. And um, I, I had to do this big attack on my last turn where I would do the same defensive attack with Regilecki VMAX. I would leave my big VMAX in the active and be like, all right, you're gonna have to swing into 310 if you're gonna try and take this. That's a lot, so you have to make it rain, you know? Can you make it rain? We'll see. And he would have been able to make it rain for that big damage if you could play two supporters per turn. Um, so we had to do the judge call because like you have to in that scenario. He played Iono and then Cypher and it's just like, yeah, it, it had to be done. So uh, Matt unfortunately had to take a DPL and he actually took a DPL at a regional one time playing Golden Go 2, I believe, or another event. The other DPL he got for playing so fast was uh, he announced the attack, make it rain, thinking it was like the ability for coin bonus so fast. So he said, make it rain. And then he drew two cards and you get a DPL for seeing those extra cards. So he took a DPL that way one time. So that's why players can't play too fast. That's a prime example of if you go too fast, you can miss playing at DPLs. And that's one of the things like a lot of, I guess, more casual people who kind of cringe at players tying and needing to make gentlemen's agreements at regionals. People are just gonna be like, yo, just play faster, just play faster. But if you play too fast, these kind of things can happen and it really sucks to see. So our insanely, insanely close game was basically down to the wire. It was basically like a automatic win for me the second I was given, or he was given the DPL because I had just to take one prize card left. I just was able to, on my next turn, I'd be able to attack, but he just scooped it up because he knew he, he wouldn't be able to bounce back because uh, I just had to take the one more prize card. So, unfortunately, we had to be LDF like that, but I would love to have a rematch with him soon. Going into round number five, our record is three wins and one loss, and our opponent for round number five was the homie William. 
Uh, William is one of Matan's best buddies, and uh, this was kind of like time for me to get revenge because his boy Matan cooked me around one, so now it was my turn to get William on this one. And we had an insanely, insanely close game. It almost came down to him hitting me with a huge Iono. However, I was able to draw out of the Iono with the help of my Pheasantipity, Mew, and Radiant Greninja. And so my big attack that basically, the big play that I lined up that kind of won me the game from being able to bounce back from that is my first attack on his Dragapult EX, his only Dragapult or Dreepy like Pokemon on the board, was for the Photon Blaster for 220 damage, leaving him with 100 HP left. And then on my second uh, turn, the follow-up attack, I needed to get my Regilecki V into Regilecki V Max, and I needed to get my Zapdos on the board. I felt really dumb because I literally had both those cards in my hand. Uh, I could have played the Zapdos on the previous turn, but I chose not to. So when he hit me with the Iono, I was like, crap, I have to really now dig now and try and get that Zapdos on the board. And then I was also sad too, because my Regilecki V Max was also in my hand the previous turn and uh, it got sent to the bottom as well. So I was able to, I think, draw into a nest ball. That allowed me to shuffle my deck so my cards would no longer be at the bottom and I could uh, get Maridon out, Tendam Unit, the Zapdos out, and then I was able to somehow draw into the Regilecki VMAX. Now, I, I have, my Maridon was knocked out the previous turn by the Dragapult EX. You might be wondering how I was able to hit for 100 damage on this Dragapult EX. The secret sauce, Regilecki VMAX plus Zapdos. So, Zara Aura swings for 30 damage for one Lightning, 60 if it's an into an evolution Pokemon. So, 60 base into this Dragapult DX with my Zara Aura for one Lightning Energy. I have Zapdos on the board, that makes it 70 damage, plus 10. I have Regilecki VMAX on the board, that's an extra 30 damage. So now, I'm swinging for 100 damage for one Lightning Energy. That was the nail in the coffin to seal the deal onto that Dragapult EX. On his following turn, he had a really strong return turn. However, he just wasn't able to close up the game by drawing into a fire energy that he needed. Um, he didn't get to play his crystal and he didn't draw the fire energy. So I kind of got super lucky at the end there, but a lot of those lists do get very greedy with very low energy counts and stuff like that too, because they rely so heavily on the Arvin and crystal combo. And uh, yeah, my opponent William, he just wasn't able to close it out in the end with the fire energy. So we took it. And it was a very, very close game. And William even told me that his deck was favored into Maridon, which I could typically agree with. Uh, however, my deck is not... I sound so goofy saying that. I'm not your average Maridon. I'm not like every other girl. I'm not like every other boy. I'm different. But like straight up, my Maridon is different because I have the Regilecki VMAX package and I have the Zero Aura in there. Most Maridon players will never touch those cards into their deck. Vincent roasts me all the time for having them in my deck and he'll never put Regilecki VMAX or Zero Aura in his deck. But those were the reasons I won the Dragon Ball VMAX matchup. And those are also the reasons I win other matchups, other, other matchups as well, along with the mirror match against his 60 card list piloted by Chantal earlier that tournament. I was like, yo Chantal, Tell, tell Vincent to add Regilecki VMAX to the list. Tell him, tell him to add the Regilecki. We got one more round left to talk about. We have round number six, and we are now uh, four wins and one loss going to round number six. And my opponent for round number six, I told you guys, I played two people from the previous week at Manta as a rematch for this particular tournament. We played against Parker, the control player, once again for round number six. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, another control matchup against Parker. Not looking forward to it. I hate playing against control because I don't get to play typically how I would usually play. You have to play so, so different. This matchup was way closer compared to the first one I had against him the previous week where I've made some really sloppy misplays. This time, however, prizing actually became an issue for me in this. I ended up prizing my one copy of Future Booster Energy Capsule and I had benched my Iron Thorns EX very early into the game so I could prevent him from using Rotom V Instant Charge again and again and again. That's usually one of the best cards in control decks, the Rotom V. So I figured, yo, let's just drop the Thorns in and um, when I go for my Arvin play, I'll just grab the capsule. Didn't do a proper prize check, got punished for it. I had my rescue board in the deck, I had switch cards in there, but my future booster energy capsule was prized. So, uh, Parker was able to steal a couple of turns by just having my thorns stuck in the active. And then, um, I actually took a lot of prizes this game. I think it was down to my last two or last one prize. However, every single time I would do some like big mean meaningful damage on his Pokemon, like a Mimikyu with a cape, a hero's cape on it, or his Blood Moon or Saluna that he would bring up, Parker would just be able to top deck or draw at the right time or just have it, have Penny. So he would keep doing these Penny loops 
uh, basically taking away all my hard work, all my damage I put onto his board with Penny. It was rough, it was rough. This time though, we didn't go to a very uh, sad end game where we deck out. He was actually able to close out the game by attacking me with his Bud Moon or Salunas for knockout. So, I think going forward, I, I don't go for these big aggressive plays, you could say, unless I know I'm gonna like donk them in one to two turns. Taking those press cards is setting up that Blood Moon Ursa Luna for success later on. And so in some of these matchups, you can just drag it out to a tie, can not take any prizes, and then their counter catchers are not gonna be live. Their uh, Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX is not gonna be able to be able to do big swings. Like it was swinging into my Maridon for one shot KOs. And I was like, dang, I had Bravery Charm in hand. I could have put it on my Maridon, but it was not expecting this Blood Moon play out of nowhere. So yeah, I guess Parker is now my local control rival. I keep playing against week after week. Uh, so GG's Parker. Uh, and uh, yeah, our final record for this final tournament of this recap was uh, four wins and two losses getting ninth place out of 39. We got the exact same match history as the previous week where we lost the first game, we lost the last game, and we won the four in between. It was it was really weird. Click on screen if you guys wanna see my Maridon deck profile right here. You can click over here to see me rock Ampharos EX at the Vancouver Regionals. Watch one of these two vlogs. Say bye, Rosie. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, her balance is insane. Oh my goodness. <laughs>